class of 2021. Wow, what a year. Not only was it your senior year, but it was just the craziest year on record with the pandemic and online classes and just adjusting and changing and adapting and then throw graduation into the mix. I get it. Finals around the corner. Graduation is coming in a few weeks. And now the question on everyone's mind, what's next? I'm sure everyone keeps asking you and you keep thinking to yourself too, how am I going to land my first job after graduation? Well, I'm here to help with that today. My name is Sarah Thompson. I'm an executive recruiter, a nonprofit leader, and a community volunteer. And I'm excited to be sharing my perspective with you today and my expertise on how to land your first job after graduation. Before I jump into resume tips, networking advice, and of course, how to negotiate that, that final job offer, I'd like to just share a little bit about me and my background and kind of where I come from. So as I mentioned, I'm an executive recruiter. I probably led 20 searches back in 2020, and I'm on pace to do even more than that this year. My main clients include Rady Children's Hospital Foundation, Housing Commission, Boys and Girls Club of San Marcos, primarily recruit for nonprofit and or mission-focused organizations. So needless to say, I see a variety of candidates come through my door every single day. Over 500 candidates typically apply for one position that I'm sourcing for. And on average, I'm probably spending 30 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, on a particular resume as I've screened over, I think, probably 11 to 12,000 resumes over the past 12 months. So what's next, college students? Oh my goodness, here we go, right? It's time to put yourself out there and looking far and wide. So what's next? What's the plan? What have you been thinking about these past four years plus? What I recommend to college students and new grads and job seekers in general is look far and wide. This is the opportunity. I mean, my goodness, we are in a global pandemic and things are starting to come around. You're, you're, um, you have employers who are starting to bring people back to the office, but there's going to be a lot of remote opportunities out there still. And we're also looking at and starting to see the hybrid model come into place where it's a few days at home, which you guys are already pros at. You have, um, in terms of your online learning capabilities, you guys already know how to use Zoom, how to prepare for meetings, how to work and get your projects done without having to be in an office. So look far, look wide, but don't be overly specific in your job search. Sometimes there's um, uh, position titles out there that you wouldn't even necessarily put together in, in your mind. So just do a broad sweep of the market and start to follow organizations and companies and and look at what their top job titles are. And that'll help you in your search when you're starting to look and um, put in those keyword searches as you're looking at your, whether it's your LinkedIn applications or Indeed, or quite frankly, just being out there and finding these organizations in throughout the country. And think about not just big businesses, right? I mean, big businesses get the big brand awareness and really catch everyone's attention. Everyone wants to go and work for a big company. But remember, 95% uh, of businesses in our region alone have fewer than 500 employees. And quite frankly, many have far less than that. And with the smaller companies, you actually have the opportunity to really get in, take a deep dive, not just do what's exactly on your job description. But there's opportunities for growth and potential learning outside of your specific job description. So think about that as you're, as you're looking at uh, potential opportunities for your next role. And the one thing I really want you all to remember is empl employers hire for a few reasons. Number one, you're going to make them money. You're going to be in a role that is going to help them drive revenue. You're also going to be hired because you potentially help them save money and or both. So when you're crafting your resume for a specific position, think about those things. It's just business, whether it's a nonprofit or a for-profit, organizations need to make dollars to, to keep their doors open. 
So when you're crafting your resume, again, I want to see percentages and numbers and growth and impact, even as new grads, when you're thinking about what to put on your resume, think about um, whether it was your internships or class projects, what um, maybe Maybe in customer service, you contacted X number of people per day, right? I want to hear about, um, like, say, for example, you maybe worked in a call center and maybe you worked at a front desk of a hotel. How many customers were you reaching each day? Um, how did that percentage change over time? How did you make an impact for that organization or that company? Those are the types of things that are going to stand out to a recruiter as well when they're looking at your resume. Those things pop out. And I also say, don't always follow the general grammar rules in terms of spelling out smaller numbers. I just put them on the paper because those numbers, so say the number four, if you had four direct reports or worked with, um, uh, I don't know, 40, you know, you had 40 touch points a day in terms of calls or, or growth or, um, I would encourage you to just put those numbers on, on your resume because that growth and impact is what, um, what employers are looking for. And again, you're going to help them make money or save money, if you will. Other things I encourage you to put on your resume are what I call back of the business card activities, your volunteer service, your professional development. What community groups are you a part of? Did you do any special consulting gigs or projects? Um, even through your, your programs, did you have did you get to work with other, I don't know, organizations or teams? Showcase that work because that is all applicable experience that we want to be able to see on your resume. It shows you're involved. It shows that you have hustle and drive. And we know how hard it is to be a student, let alone if you were a working student and then you were doing these other things as well. It shows that you're able to just adapt and be flexible and also that you're in a learning mode of willing to take on new opportunities. LinkedIn. I definitely want to spend some time talking about LinkedIn today because it makes it easier for employers to find you. It's your online resume, right? But it's so much more than that. It's a work in progress. You have to constantly be updating your LinkedIn and there's ways to customize it so you stand out. And even at this stage of the process, I would encourage you to update your LinkedIn to add, um, even in your position title, if you will, instead of having student at PLNU, I would encourage you to put the opportunities that you want to go for. What are the roles you're looking for? Because those are the keywords that recruiters are searching for. And when your profile pops up, because I'm assuming you'll put your LinkedIn profile on your resume as well, you can create that custom URL um, in part of your settings. So in my case, I have just my name. It makes it very simple for people to find me on LinkedIn. And I don't have all of those like numbers kind of jumbled up at the end of that, that URL. So customize your URL, put that on your resume and tell people what you do. Um, this is a chance to showcase your work. You can highlight your skills, people can endorse you for projects, and you can make your work very tangible. If you, say for example, worked on a special research project with a team and you have work product, you can upload that. If you have a video to share or maybe an article that you published or a blog post, you can share all of those things via your LinkedIn profile. And it makes it really easy for employers to already see the work that you're doing and see how that correlates and translates to their business. So, um, and of course that you can let recruiters know there's a, a feature on your page that you can say that you're open to work and I can showcase that I'm hiring. So it's a great way for, for recruiters just to be able to see that information about you. So if you are able to update your LinkedIn, I would highly encourage you to start building your network in this space. And it also allows you to stay in touch with not just your current classmates and cohort members and faculty members, 
but you'll be able to track and stay in touch with these individuals over throughout their career and as they change their roles. So, I mean, let's see, I have probably changed positions six times or so, probably more. So it's really great to be able to go back on LinkedIn and see where my colleagues are from 15 years ago when I was early in my career. It's really great to keep up with everybody, especially if I have a question or need them as a, as a resource and, or a connection to anything else that I'm doing. Uh, let's see here. Oh, big question. How do we find employers? So one of my tips and tricks for finding employers is actually just going to the source. Where do businesses go to meet each other? So in this case, we have our, our local and regional chamber of commerce and they have members um, there's also the San Diego Regional EDC, there's professional groups, networking groups, and of course your PLNU alumni groups on LinkedIn and, and various places. Take a look at where people work and start actually just taking a look at, like I mentioned before, look at these smaller employers, not just the bigger ones that everyone's familiar with. Look at these smaller employers and see if they have positions open and how you might add value to one of those companies. Companies typically always have a need for finance professionals, human resources, communications, you name it, operations. It doesn't have to be necessarily the a specific job that you're looking for, there's a variety of opportunities that you could fit into and actually just have an opportunity for exploring your own career development um, and the next phase of your career, just opportunity to learn, especially as you get your foot through the door as a new employee. Okay, so I, it's a numbers game, right? You're going to have to apply for jobs. And what I encourage you is to track your progress. Keep revisiting company websites. There's, so in this case, I'm showing you a snapshot of LinkedIn. You can follow a company on LinkedIn. You can actually click to see which employees work there. And LinkedIn will actually give you recommendations of other companies to follow. So keep track of your progress and where you're applying and what you're looking for. And if companies look of interest or if there's even a position that looks of interest to you, reach out to their employees via LinkedIn, craft a very nice message, customize and tailor your request, be specific about what you're asking for. So you can, if you reach out to an employee, say at Illumina, and you request 10 minutes of their time, oftentimes they're going to give you well more than 10 minutes of your time just because people like to talk about their roles. And your alumni network is your strongest connection because at some point someone helped that person to land their job. So paying it forward to a new grad or a current student, Alums are, are incredibly gracious with their time, and I would encourage you, I mean, you're not going to get a yes every single time, but keep track. 10 employers, 10 employees request 10 minutes of their time, and keep at it every single, every single week. Add new people to your list and reach out. It'll help you just to expand your network and, quite frankly, just learn about about these different companies, the work that they do in, in our community, and how you might be able to fit into their company culture. And you have to go for it. You have to apply. And we all know as new grads that you aren't going to have necessarily every single skill set, but that's okay. Showcase the hard skills and soft skills that you, that you bring to the table. What are your capabilities? And what's your connection to the mission and company values? Add that piece to your, to your cover letter if that's requested for the position. But always, always use the key words from the job announcement. That's the number one thing the, the HR recruiter is going to be looking for. How do you match up? What do you bring to the table? These things are just very important. I know it sounds so obvious, but just take a little bit of time to customize each resume. It's good to have your basic one and even have a few other templates ready to go based on the types of positions that you're currently looking for. 
and use your network. I cannot stress this enough. As we mentioned, start building up your LinkedIn network. When you apply for a job, look at who posted that job. Um, in my case, people can reach out to me directly. They can send me a direct message on LinkedIn, but don't just send the generic LinkedIn template that pops up because trust me, I see hundreds of those a day. Customize your message. Tell me why. Tell me why you want to have a phone call, why I should reach out to you, why I should give you the opportunity to showcase your skill set and experience. But the most important piece is follow up. If you can find out again who that hiring manager is, or if you know of anyone on staff, name drop, ask for that meeting. People know that A players attract A players. So if if someone is referring you, HR is going to give you that call because they it's speed of trust. They know that the people who are who are being referred are going to be potential really great employees. And if it's not going to be for that position, perhaps it's going to be something else. Recruiters are typically recruiting for multiple positions at a time. So it's even if you get your foot through the door, put your best foot forward and just share that you're also open to other opportunities as well. I think that's important to share. And then also I encourage you do the same for others. If someone reaches out to you or perhaps you see a position on LinkedIn that could be perfect for one of your cohort members or classmates, send that job description to them. Offer to make a connection if you have one. When you get to be known as a connector, people, it's reciprocity. People will reach out and do that same thing for you too. If you are known as the connector, you're going to be that go-to person and quite frankly, expanding your network even further. It's a very good skill. And quite frankly, it just, um, yeah, we all need a little bit of help. We all need each other to be reaching out and um, looking out for each other. And again, um, if a recruiter reaches out to you and perhaps the position isn't the right fit, you'll know someone who is, but always take a recruiter's call. There's no harm in a 10 minute call, even if it isn't necessarily the right fit for you. But if someone reaches out to you, especially in your early career, I encourage you to build that relationship. And of course, follow up just Oh my goodness, just because you submit your application doesn't mean it's going to get the full attention that it deserves. I think I mentioned I spend maybe 30 seconds looking at a resume, I'm looking for those numbers, those percentages, the keywords, those key skills that I'm looking for to fill a job. So if perhaps I overlooked a specific skill set, follow up with me, send me an email, send me you know, if you can find phone numbers, call and just let someone know how interested you are. It also shows that you have tenacity, determination. You're not afraid to follow up. You're not afraid to um, professionally communicate with someone. It's, I don't know, it, even if it gives someone a second look, I, I, whenever someone calls, emails or messages me on LinkedIn, I usually go back and take a look. It doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get that call, but I think it's always good to at least ask and make the person tell you no, and that's okay. Referrals. So again, if you see someone in your network who is connected to a person that you are hoping to reach, give them a call, send them a message, ask for that direct connection, whether it's via email. An email introduction is always great if people are active on LinkedIn, those LinkedIn connections, because I guarantee your network is going to be your strongest source of job opportunities here, not just here in this region, but beyond. People know people everywhere, and someone knows someone who's looking for that particular job. Don't be afraid to ask for that connection and ask for that person to directly make that introduction for you. It's going to be key in your job search. All right, once you get called for that interview, please prepare, please practice. Um, this could be practicing with your roommate, asking a parent, asking a, a colleague just to ask you, I mean, you can do a quick Google search, right? Google is your friend. Do a quick Google search and look at like 
you know, the 10 or 20 most commonly asked interview questions. Your resume, again, is going to get your foot through the door. Be prepared to talk about all of those details that are that are on your resume. But just know that, you know, 60% of the job, they're going to they're gonna pick you because you can do most of the job. They know they're going to have to train you on the other piece. Not everyone is ever going to fully um, check every single box for an organization when they're making a hire. Don't be afraid to ask the HR manager or the recruiter, whoever, you're, whoever helps schedule your interview, for a quick prep call. Get all the details ahead of time time, location, who you're meeting with, what their titles are, and do your homework and your research. Look them up on LinkedIn. Do a quick search. See if you have any common interests or maybe they published an article recently that you can reference. Uh, companies always want to know. And I mean, it's a two-way street with hiring, right? You want to make sure that you're finding a company that you want to work with, but company, companies want to know that you're excited to come and work for them as well. And, you know, it's it just shows that you did your homework, you are interested and hungry to learn more. And dress the part. If this is the type of opportunity where you need to be suited up and in professional attire, you can kind of look at even an organization's um, like their headshots, if you will, on their leadership team page. Are they all in suits and ties? If that's the case, you might want to suit suit up, put that tie on. Um, walk out the door. If it's a more of a casual, you could go with more of a, maybe it's a casual button up. Maybe you don't need the full jacket, but always dress the part of the, what do they say? Dress for the job that you want, not that the job that you're actually going to interview for, right? If you want to be CEO of that company, dress the part. Be prompt for your interview, but not too early. You have to remember that most likely when they are scheduling interviews, they are having, they are scheduling candidates back to back to back. So it's uncomfortable for a hiring manager to have someone who comes too early and sitting in the waiting room and having candidates cross paths, especially in San Diego. And as you get further in your career, everybody tends to know everyone in a certain industry. So, you don't want to have an awkward situation happen, even in the parking lot. So be prompt, be just a few minutes early, but definitely not too early. And just remember that every interaction is part of your interview. From, from the minute you pull into the parking garage and you're fighting someone for a parking space or you're sharing an elevator up and maybe a little flustered, remember every interaction is going to be a part, who knows, that person could be interviewing you, that person could be the CEO, that could, person could be the, um, the customer service representative who is going to work with you. So just remember, every interaction is part of that interview. And the hiring manager, if they're smart, they're going to ask even the front desk professionals what they thought of you and how you treated them. So keep that in mind. And nail your elevator pitch. Keep in mind when you are interviewing, they're they're interviewing lots of candidates. So when they ask you why you want this position, have your elevator pitch down. Why do you want it? Why are you skilled? Draw the parallels between your background and experience in this role and what you bring to the table. But keep it short, keep it succinct, because you also want to make sure that you're getting all of the other questions answered and leaving time for questions that you have at the end of the interview as well. So um, I also encourage candidates to actually just ask what the format will be from the get go. So it's okay to ask the hiring manager, just, you know, in the interest of time, you're wearing your watch, you're keeping track, you know that if they are going to ask you 10 questions and you have 60 minutes, you want to leave at least 10 minutes for questions that you have so you can be mindful of your time. I also remind candidates to bring um, bring a portfolio with you. Have a notepad ready to go. So when they ask you a question, even if it's a two or sometimes three part question, you can quickly jot down what those questions were so you don't have to ask the hiring manager. What was that third part again? It's just really handy. So don't be afraid to, to write things down just so you can organize your thoughts. And it also just gives you a moment to pause and collect your thoughts. And so that way you can give a thoughtful reply. 
and always use concrete examples if you have them. Talk about an experience. It's the arc, right? The here was the problem, here was the here's what happened, here was the solution, and here's what I learned from it. So having those clear examples um, will really make you stand out as a candidate for for a particular position. And again, manage your time, wear a watch. I think I mentioned that. Bring your own questions and not questions that are, you know, how much vacation time does this position have? How much, you know, tell me about the benefits. What do you anticipate as the start date? Those things are all important, but a lot of those you can have answered in that prep call with your, with the hiring manager or the recruiter, if you will. Use your questions and use your time wisely as it relates to what's the company culture? What are the opportunities for growth? What, you know, is this a backfill position or a newly created role? What do they hope to achieve? There's so many questions that help you, again, determine whether or not this is going to be the right culture for you to join. A job search is a two-way street. You want to make sure this is the right fit for you too. And then, of course, follow up with your thank you notes. Always in this day and age of technology, and the minute you get home or get to a spot where you can send a thoughtful note, uh, send that thank you email right away. It's always nice to know when I hear from candidates that they're excited about a position or they thought the interview went well or maybe a challenge they had. Um, I always like to hear that as the recruiter, but for the organization, for the hiring manager that you met with or the team of folks that you met with, write a personalized note, write what caught your attention about your interview. And then they are going to remember you because that touch point now makes you top of mind for them. And of course, I'm gonna say, send an old school paper thank you note. It's gonna arrive a few days later. They're usually still in their decision-making process. And when they get that thank you note at their desk, they're going to have to trigger that memory of, oh my goodness, yes, I met with so-and-so. They were fantastic. What a great note. This is very professional. This is great follow-up. And so I encourage you to, to again, uh, connect via email right away because you want to show that you're still interested and then send that thank you note just so that you become top of mind again a day or two later. Okay. The offer, we, this is what we want to get to, right? The end result, you've gone through multiple rounds of interviews. It can seem like a lot. You've tracked companies, you've tracked who you've met with and phone calls and follow-up and more follow-up. Then you get the offer. So there's going to be times in your early career, especially when you are going to be given a firm offer. And off, well, most times clients or employers will tell you this is a firm offer there isn't much room for for there isn't going to be room for negotiation and that's okay right because hopefully you have then discussed salary at at least the second or third stage of your interview process and even better hopefully the position uh, salary range was listed before you even applied so that way you kind of know where you are so if you are early career and stepping in, I mean, you're most likely going to be at the lower end of the range because they need to give you room for growth and professional development. But don't be afraid if there is a range. And even if you ask for, I don't know, let's say the salary range is, um, we'll go 50 to $60,000 and they offer you 50. You, I mean, there's no harm if, if the negotiation is open ask for 55. Maybe they will come back and say yes. And if not, okay, all you did was try. You have to practice your negotiation skills. Do not leave money on the table. Employers know that quality talent is hard to find. And if they want you, they are going to find a way to make it work. But just remember, whatever salary level you come in at is going to be your starting point moving forward for every annual evalu evaluation from there. So if you're getting a 3 to 5% raise every year, don't you want a 3 to 5% raise on the 55 versus the 50? You see my point. Just make sure that you are thinking about not just salary and where you are, but also kind of where you want to be and that trajectory for growth moving forward. 
And don't forget, especially for both large and small organizations, say you go to work for a nonprofit organization where they cannot offer you necessarily the highest salary, they can offer you flexibility and perhaps there's a performance incentive or a bonus pay or bonus structure for meeting, meeting your goals throughout the year. Don't be afraid to have a conversation about just creative co compensation, vacation time benefits. I mean, there's a lot of great organizations out there that offer really great vacation time and that's nice right we want to be able to turn off work and feel supported and go into your first job day one in a, on a on a positive note feeling good about where you've landed and where you hope to go and where you hope to take your career goals from there um, I think this also lets the hiring manager know that you're goal oriented you aren't afraid to um, also just put these opportunities on the table where you you have a performance plan from day one, right? Well, here's where I wanna go and here's what I hope to achieve. And that way you're not just learning and managing your current role, but looking at places and opportunities for growth within the company from day one. I mean, companies want to keep good talent and they're going to offer you those challenging opportunities to continue to grow professionally. Again, that's why hiring is a two-way street. You want to find good companies that are going to support you in your career. All right, here's your call to action. I know that landing a job is so nerve-wracking right now, but here's just a reminder of the tips that we covered today. Craft your LinkedIn presence, your profile. Make sure that everything is up to date. Add projects, get endorsements. Um, Ask for referrals, build up your build up your network, connect with everyone in your cohort, board members that you know, donors that you know. Um, I'm thinking along the lines of um, nonprofit organizations that you've volunteered for. Connect with every single person in your network, and um, again. You can even add, I don't, don't think I mentioned this before, you can upload a copy of your resume to LinkedIn. Recruiters can actually see that on the back end when you apply for jobs. There's, um, that's a great tool, even just to have your generic resume uploaded to your, to your LinkedIn. But make sure your LinkedIn is updated. Um, make sure your resume has your LinkedIn profile on it, because again, you can put more information on your LinkedIn and they can see your traction versus just on your resume. And of course, continue your professional development and skills training. As you start to look at these particular job descriptions, look at what skills you might be missing. What sort of things can you um, be learning? Are there other certificates you can take over the summer just to continue your own professional development? And I keep mentioning nonprofit organizations because that's a great way as you, as they need volunteers, you can get experience in operations and fundraising and programs, you name it. And that's great, great to put on your resume. So just think about those other volunteer opportunities that can get you the skills that you're looking for. And find a mentor and a sponsor, right? A mentor who can help coach you along during this time. Someone who can help you practice your, your interview questions and skills and look at your resume and help brush it up or even provide recommendations on who your references should be for a certain position. And sponsors, of course, are the ones helping you get that leg up in your career, helping to open doors for you and, and make recommendations to particular employers. And again, don't be afraid to apply and always, always, always follow up. These are just key elements to um, getting through the weeds, right? I mean, when organizations get hundreds of applicants for a particular role, that follow-up is, is really key. It shows that you are determined and hungry. And quite frankly, class of 2021, you guys have shown such resilience and grace under pressure and really have stepped up to the plate during a very uncertain time. Don't be afraid to showcase that. I mean, even though you were you didn't get to be out and about for in-person internships for many of you, I'm sure. Just showcase that you did just like everyone else in this world and jumped right into that virtual learning and virtual work environment. That's important for employers to know because 
We all had to live through a very tough year this year, but please know organizations are hiring. I probably in the last two months have seen more jobs come online as our economy starts to open back up. Just know that a lot of companies did go through some really hard times, but I think we're turning the corner and we're starting to see a lot of positions open. So do your homework, reach out to your 10 employers, your 10 employees and ask for 10 minutes of networking time. All of these connections will just help you in your job search. So good luck. I'm wishing you well, and I'm rooting for you. Thank you all. Good luck 2020, class of 2020, and enjoy graduation. You have earned it.